Okay, so <laughs> should Hi, I just go should ahead, Vika? <laughs> <laughs> so our, our speaker to, today is Diana Montoya from uh, the University of Vienna, uh, the Kurt Gödel Research Center, and it's great to have you here. You 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 spoke at the actual set theory seminar, right, a while ago, and that was very yeah. nice. So this is a different way of doing it, but it's still great to have you here again. And she'll speak about independent families on uncountable cardinals. Go ahead, yeah. Um, good, thanks. Uh, thanks first for the invite. invite. It's, no, it's my first Zoom talk. So um, I, I hope it won't get to, get to technical. I plan it such that I will try to give the um, ideas of some pros, but if, uh, at some point you feel it's too weird, or if you don't understand, please feel free to um, interrupt me because I think, yeah, this distance thing makes that somehow communication is harder. I have the impression, at least from the Zoom talks I have heard. Um, so yeah, please just feel free to ask um, anytime you want. So the older the results I'm going to mention here are all joint work with Vera Fisher. Um, they are split in two papers. Um, yeah, I, I will mention more, but yeah, this is joint work with Vera. Um, and I'm going to talk about independent families and to motivate the last results that are the ones I would like to talk um, more deeply, maybe. I have to talk about the classical case of the independent, the classical independent number for um, for subset of omega. Um, yeah, so the, this is the first section and the, section, the second section is about generalized, um, the generalized concept of independence for uncountable cardinals. Okay, so, um, First, the definition, what is an independent family? Um, so a family A of su infinite subset of omega. So first, some notation, such that we agree on this from now on. So first, I'm going to call FF of A uh, to be the family of finite partial, partial functions from A to two, um, and given a function in this set, I'm going to call AH um, the intersection of uh, this. So I, I, I will write, I mean, at some point I will use the uh, the blackboard or something and that it's here, but I will write also here on the side. Um, so right. So AH, I will call the Boolean combination corresponding to the function H. And basically it's just taking intersections of these sets this is capital, this is curly H, and this is the capital H. And basically the function H is, is telling you where you take um, the set or the complement. So um, for a finite family of sets, you are taking intersections either of complements or the sets themselves. Um, and yeah, I will call the set of all this, the set of Boolean, the family of co Boolean combinations of uh, uh, of the family associated, no, associated to H. This is with, of the, of A. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry, this is. Uh, okay, so then I will say that a family of subsets of omega is independent if for each of these functions h uh, the boolean combination corresponding to h is infinite so for all possible choices of these intersections the intersection is infinite and an independent family is said to be maximal if it is not properly contained in a family with the same property okay um so I want to give an example. This is 
the first example, I think, I saw uh, there is from an independent family is due to Fichten, who is in Kantorovich. Um, it was in a paper about, it was like functional analysis, and at some point they were um, taking a family of measurable states and then and they define it. Um, an independent family of some measurable sets. Um, right, so what is the example? Okay, now this is written in a most so theoretical term. So we can uh, take C as the finite subsets of the rationals and given a real, I will define uh, this, set, this set XR as all these finite subsets of rationals such that this intersection is even. So basically, I am looking at the reals and given a real and an infinite set of rationals. Let's see if I put that way. Red. Mm. But it's fine. Let's say Q, Q3. Uh, then I will just look at what is the intersection of the set with, with this interval. Open interval. Right. And I will ask where this is even or what. And I claim that the family of these subsets for, for each R is independent. And how the argument goes, you take two sets of reals, and basically you take two because only one you want to take the intersections, uh, the intersection of the set, sets themselves, and the, in the other one you want to take the complements. Uh, and I also did a drawing, like a proper drawing. Uh, let me show you. Mm. So, proof by picture. Um, you basically can suppose, I mean, you can put the set, the, sorry, the real is the, the S's and the R's in some configuration. They are just finitely many, so you can put them in there. Right? And you say, okay, for the S's, I want that to be outside of the set. And for the R's, I want it to be on it. So, for this is outside, so I wanted the intersection of this of my set with this is with this interval has to be odd. So then I put a point and then I jump to the next one. I say, okay, is, is this an S or is this an R? And then I decided where I put a point or not. And you know that you have infinitely many choices to do this. So this this it. Oh, sorry, I, I should have written. Sorry, this is a typo. This should be like this. This this intersection is going to be infinite. Mm -hmm. So this is an independent family. Um, there are other examples from Hausdorff and so on. But yeah, I, I just want to give you a bit of the flavor where how this family look like, and the existence of in maximal independent families you just guarantee by using choice. Mm -hmm. um, there is something in the chat, should I look? Um, oh, no, so that's okay. Mm. Right, so then one can define the cardinal characteristic, that it's I, is the minimum size of an independent family of subsets of omega. And this is a cardinal invariant in this instance. Uh, it's always an uncountable cardinal, but it's below the continuum. And some of the lower bounds for um, I are both D and R. And there are no upper bounds outside of um, the continuum. Um, there is still a couple of interesting open problems regarding the independent number, uh, namely, mm, Oh, wait, maybe I should. Oh. Sorry, I'm just getting used to the tablet on this. Um, 
Right, so we don't know lower bounds. I will talk about um, now wait, how do I do it? Maybe let's go ahead with the next one and then I will talk about the open result that there is. So the first question you ask when you have a cardinal invariant, then um, of course many inequalities with all, if one thinks about the, um, let's say Blas's diagram of, of cardinal invariant, uh, many models where you separate cardinals you, you have because you really have, you use the low, lower bounds R and, and D, uh, but there, from the interesting inequalities one care about, maybe it's, um, I less than U, oh, I less than A. Hmm. And the second one is still an open problem. Hmm. It seems, this is, it seems quite hard and it seems there are no methods um, by now of how to prove where the consistency of this inequality. Mm. So yeah, this is another open problem. And I think the one that is famous is where I can have countable covinality. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at some point someone told me that this was solved like with the method of templates, but then the domain is not that clear. So I, I um, the current state, I don't know, but the last time I, I, I heard it was still open. Okay, so um, one of the first question also one can ask is, okay, can I, if you see the example of that I talk about, um, if you start, the independent family I mentioned um, is an independent family of full size, is an independent family of size continuum. And if you see the other examples that have been constructed of independent families, they are all of full size. So you can ask, um, can I construct an independent family? Um, for example, of size Aleph one. Mm -hmm. And towards, um, answering this question, there is um, a poset given by um, that Brentley developed um, toward such a witness of small size. Okay, he he proved more than that, but okay, this is this is one of the consequences of what he proved. And the first thing that he proved is this lemma. And okay, let me just make a, a, a parallel a bit with the. All maximal almost joint families. If you have heard of maximal almost joint families, um, yeah. how do you add an independent say, uh, and, um, suppose you have a maximal almost joint family and you want to, or no, even so, su suppose you have an in the, uh, no, sorry, suppose you have a uh, maximal almost joint family and you yeah. want to add a set that, let's say, this destroys the maximality. So I said that it's going to be um, almost disjoint from all what you are. Uh, you usually do this by considering the ideal associated to a maximal almost disjoint family. And then you look at the dual filter and you force with Matthias forcing. So this is going a bit on the, the, this direction, but the thing is that ideals corresponding to independent families are not They are canonical in the sense that right now we have a characterization from them, but there are many of them. It's not like the ideal you, for the maximal multi-joint family, you just take the ideal generated by the mod family. Um, okay, so this is this is what the lemma talks about, about an ideal associated to uh, maximal inde an independent family or a maximal independent. So if you take an independent family, there is an ideal that I will call J of A 
on omega and that has the following properties. So the ideal has empty intersections with the set of Boolean combinations. And if you have an infinite subset of omega, um, there is a Boolean, sorry that I sometimes use the term like for both. I mean, sometimes I will say like for a function from one of these finite functions also, Boolean combinations. But, um, so for every infinite set, there is a Boolean combination such that um, either the intersection of X with the, with the Boolean combination or uh, AH minus, minus X is in the idea. And I wanted to prove this because it's, I think it's a nice proof. Um, so let me, I will stop this and then I will share the, the blackboard. Let's see. So, also let me maybe find the properties again because surely I want an ideal associated to the independent family and the ideal should have empty intercept intersection with the set of Boolean combinations. And given us a, an infinite subset of omega, um, there exists, oh, sorry. A Boolean combination. Such that either this intersection or this one is in the idea, right? So how the proof goes? Do you see properly? Is it okay? Size like? Yes, it's good. It's yeah. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea is take an enumeration. Of all the set of all the infinite subsets of omega. Mm. And we want to construct the ideal uh, JA inductively, so we will construct the steps. Uh, JA will be the union of ideals J alpha for alpha less C. Uh, and we start. with the finite sets. And if we have construct J alpha, we ask the following question. What are we? Then there is, is there a Boolean combination? Just it, the one something real. Yeah, is there a Boolean combination such that AH is contained in the corresponding set? So I am at step um, alpha and I want to construct the alpha plus one. Mm. So, um, wait, let me just erase this. Is the Boolean combination co covered by my set union with someone? And this Y isn't the ideal I have constructed so far. Y in. So if there is this kind of, I ask this question, and if there is such a set, I won't do anything. So I will just, if so, I will just put J alpha plus one to be J alpha. But otherwise, uh, I will add the corresponding X alpha. So J alpha plus one is J alpha. 
And at the limit, I will just take units. So, um, so okay, so now I claim that J has the properties I, I said. So it's weird because my picture is here, so I can Oh, yeah, no. Um, so suppose, let's say for one, um, suppose that Suppose towards a contradiction that there is, if there is some H such that AH for some reason ended up in, in JA, then it will end up in some J alpha. And I can take the minimal, so I can assume that this is a successor. So then I was in a step where I asked the question, where I have asked the question and I added, I mean, I can take this, the minimum. So it means that I have added this, right? So it means that for all Boolean combinations, uh, and, and this is a bad choice of letters, so let me just change it. I should have chosen G at the, um, for all Boolean combinations and for all elements in the ideal up to alpha, this is not the case. And this is clearly a contradiction, right? Because um, if you take um, two Boolean combinations, one extended the other, um, the Boolean, com the, the set, set A H will decrease, okay? And you can take just G, uh, Y to be an, an empty set. And the second part um, is like this, but I will erase a bit. Mm, where? And the argument, I think the argument is the same. Um, you just say, okay, take an element, a, an infinite subset of omega and take alpha to be such that x is x alpha in my enumeration. And I look at the step alpha. So I was at the step alpha and I did, I also can assume, oh wait, oh yeah. So I can look at the equation again. So either I did not do anything. So why alpha, uh, sorry, J alpha is um, J alpha plus one, in which case it means that the answer to equation was positive, so there was a, a, there was a Boolean combination H such that this was contained here. Uh, but then this means that um, A H um, minus X alpha has to be in the ideal, right? And otherwise, I will, sorry, I think this. It's not too messy. Otherwise, it was because the equation was was negative. So, um, right. Um, did I want to do this? Sorry. Let me just. Uh, yeah. In the other case, then you know that AH is not contained in any. And then I want to conclude that AH 
Oh, I see. Sorry. Um, it is easier than that. If I am in the next step, um, it's because I added. If the, the answer to equation was negative, it was because I added x alpha. So of course, a h intersection x alpha is going to be in the ideal. It's just smaller. So yeah, that was the proof. Oh, sorry. So let's go back to the slides. Sorry, can I just ask a quick question about that proof? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I don't know if I, if I can, can come back, but yeah. No, no, I, I don't think it matters. It's just a okay. question and make sure I understand. The J alphas, you were calling them ideals, but like if you're in a step where you throw in X alpha, do you then generate the ideal from that or? You... Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay. Thank you, thank you very no, much. No, that makes more yeah, sense, right. thank you. Yeah, 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 thank you. Thank you, I did not say that. Um, and given this idea, um, uh, then one can divide a forcing notion um, that will add an independent set to the family I started. So um, the posit uh, has as conditions pairs in the first um, coordinate you have a finite subset of omega and in the second coordinate you have a finite uh, subset, subset of sets in the ideal mm, and the extension relation is, uh, is defined as follows I am allowed um, I increase the uh, finite part I increase I can Increased and the family, I can add more sets of the of the ideal. Uh, but oh, when I extend the finite part, I have to be sure that the new um, that the new points are not um, in yeah that they have empty intersection with the union of the idea. And this pose is defined this way. This is also Brendel um, has the following properties. So if you look at the generic set added by the first coordinates, this is an infinite subset of omega, uh, such that if you, you can plug it into the independent family and you still have independent, but it has a stronger property that if you had a uh, set in the ground model um, and you plug it together with the with the this generic object, this is not independent anymore. Mm -hmm. And one of the corollaries you can get from this is that if you have two con two regular and contour cardinals, you can find uh, this is the generic extension in which. Um, the value of i and d are the same and it's kappa and they are below the continuum. So basically what you what you do in this model is that you first, um, you blow up the continuum to be the lambda you want. And then uh, you do a finite super iteration of length kappa starting with, a, you can start with a contour independent family in the ground more. Um, and then add a witness using this ideal, the forcing corresponding to this ideal. Um, okay, this was one of the results I wanted to talk about. Uh, the other one that is quite important is the result of Shella of the consistency of I less than U. And if you don't, um, maybe don't remember, U is the minimum size of an ultra filter, um, of an ultra filter base. Mm, right. So the thing is that the main point of this kind of argument is usually blowing up a cardinal, it's quite easily. So there are many forces that uh, blow up uh, you, for example. But the thing is that, of course, 
you blow up one cardinal and you have to take care uh, that it also then uh, don't blow up the other one. And Shela's technique was to construct a maximal independent family. So as he, he starts with the ground one and then he constructs an independent, he uses, he used CH to construct an independent family of size Aleph one. But this independent family is quite special because after you force, afterwards with some nice forcing, um, that increases the ultra filter number, uh, this family will, will stay maximal um, in the final extension. So um, at some point, I, I got really interested in the independent number. And then I looked at the paper of, um, of plus. And then I asked myself once, why is, OK, one knows Sachs model, and usually all cardinal invariants um, in Sachs model have value Aleph 1 or small. So Sachs, Sachs forcing is quite mild. Um, and then it said, yeah, I is also Aleph 1 and like unpublished result. <laughs> and I was curious how this could work because it wasn't, uh, to, to me at least, it was highly non trivial how this, this could work. And then I recall once I, I once, and this was the only time, I posted a question on math overflow or one of these. And then, and then thought I well, uh, uh, so mean that, that the family that Shella constructed in this model in the consistency, when he proved the consistency of I less than you, this family should be preserved by tax. And this, yeah, this gave rise to a project with Vea um, where we proved, uh, we actually constructed a posit um, that adds an independent family a maximally independent family that happens to be Sachs in the structure. Um, right, so let me talk about the family of the family. It's constructed. So first of all, um, if you have an independent family, um, Call dx to be the set of all of functions. Oh, sorry, um, for which the intersection of the set x with uh, the Boolean combination is finite, and define the ideal associated to i. To, to sorry, to the family A, uh, to the family of subsets of omega such that for all for all functions h. Uh, for this fi finite functions H, there is an extension such that the inter the, this intersection here is a finite. Um, so this is an ideal on omega. And we refer to it as the independent density ideal. Mm. Right, and this ideal will be crucial um, in the proof of Shella in the construction of the family in general, because it has a nice properties and it's dual filter, it's also quite nice. Right, so let's go ahead. So how is the pose that, that we have here? So uh, the pose um, is the set of all pairs. So now um, in the first coordinate, you have a countable independent family. And it's the second coordinate, you have an infinite subset of omega. Uh, but you have an additional condition. You want that for all finite functions on, on the family A, um, these intersections are all infinite. Mm -hmm. And the extension relation is uh, you can increase the independent family, uh, but you shrink the second coordinate. Mm -hmm. You almost. Then B is it's an almost, it's almost contained an A. 
Um, and this poster is quite nice. If you have a generic filter, then if you look at the union of the first coordinates, um, this is a maximally independent family. Mm. But it has more than, than that. Um, the, the second coordinates are, are quite crucial um, for the following. So I I'm try I will try to mention like the main properties uh, that are important. I mean that at least will be important for the results that I'm going to talk about. Uh, so it's sigma closed. Um, if you have CH, then it's aleph to CC, and and this is the the third property is is quite important because the thing is that the filter associated the, the dual filter from the from the ideal ID that I mentioned. Should I write the definition? I think maybe I should just here because you know, I always feel really confused when there are slides because sometimes definition just go by and you don't have any time to even look at them. For each, I will just, there is an extension. So then it's fine. If you look at the dual filter to this, this has a kind of nice Ramsey properties. And I will say what does exactly mean in a moment. So, uh, suppose you have a partition of omega and you have an infinite set. Uh, we say that chi of E A holds if there is an element in the partition such that my set is completely captured by, by this element in the partition or the set is spread in, a, in the elements of the, on the partition and spread quite thinly. I mean, the intersection with um, of my set with each element the partition is at most one point. Hmm. And it turns out that the following set is dense in P, meaning the set of all the conditions such that, oh, this should be H in F. Um, for all H, there exists a bull an extension such that you have chi and from E and from AH. So this is a dense for each partition. You, you fix the partition and you have um, that this is a dense set. And as uh, oh, I will I can keep it. This is quite nice. Um, And this will imply, uh, let me, ah, oh, I did not want to erase everything. Okay, I'm just learning. <laughs> um, anyway, I wanted to say that the filter, the dual filter to this filter is Ramsey in the, in the following sense. Um, and, and this is the, the idea already associated to the generic family that we are. Um, if you have a partition uh, with small sets, uh, then there is an element in the partition. And this is F, sorry, this is the filter associated to the family. There is an element in the, in the filter such that um, it's like the second part of the, of, the, of the definition that I mentioned. So um, the set is going to hit every element in the partition almost in one point. And the filter has like a kind of P point property in the sense that if you have any countable subfamily of elements in the filter, you have a common center intersection. I did not say P point because this filter is not an, an ultra filter. Hmm? And if you want to think about why this is not an ultra filter, one should think on the sets AH. If you look at, look at all the family of Boolean combinations, 
this is a set that is going to, that cannot be decided by, by the filter. Mm -hmm. So these elements avoid um, both the ideal and the filter. So this is never going to be an ultra filter. So that's why we use the notation PZ because yeah, to point out, yeah, to like make clear that this is not um, an ultra filter and so it's not P point, but it's kind of a P point property. I don't know, maybe there is another name for this already. Right. So let me just before I go to dense maximality, we'll go back to dense maximality. The result um, that we have he here um, is that the generic maximal independent family that the forcing P adds, um, if you start with a model with CH and CH and CH, GCH at uh, uh, Aleph one, Aleph. Oh. Sorry, <laughs> this is also CH. I wanted to say two to the uh, left one is a left. Sorry. Um, this family is preserved after you force with a quantum superintegration of Sachs forcing of lamb omega two. Um, and the point of the result is the following that. Um, the family E that the forcing adds has in addition this is strong property. Um, an independent family is said to be densely maximal if given an infinite subset of omega that is not in the family and any Boolean combination then you can find an extension such that either one of these is finite. And just to recall, okay, independent, A is independent. If um, all the Boolean combinations are infinite, um, but it's maximal, what does maximality mean? Maximality. Uh, for all x in let's see an infinite subset of omega, you can find some function h such that either so my my family is maximal if I cannot add a new set, and this means that are either one of these intersections is, is finite. I just wrote this because I want to make clear why, why where densely maximal comes from and why this should be stronger, right? I'm, I'm asking like if I look at the set of all these functions as a tree, if you would like, that above any node, I can find one of these intersections that is finite. Mm -hmm. And the family that the posit has, has indeed this property that actually Shellach reformulated in this way. Actually, he used it, he used it this way. And then after some reformulations, one notices that this coincides with this and, um, with being densely maximal. And the definition of densely maximal that I, see, that I gave here is quite simple, but for the proofs, like the complicated version works better. I, I, I don't know, maybe I just don't see the simple proof or we haven't seen the, the simpler proof using just this, but um, it's not that complicated, but it's, it's still longer. Um, so, the new definition, I, I will recall this um, afterwards because this is important, um, is that if you have a Boolean combination and you have a set contained in the H, there are two options. Are either there is a set in the ideal such that this intersection is contained 
a h min minus x is contained in this set in the ideal, and so this set itself is in the ideal. Or you can find an extension, so a smaller Boolean combination that is contained in the in this uh, in this set a h minus x. And the whole point of the argument of Shellag, I was planning. Let me see. I will go back maybe to a proof, and yeah, but I will go back with the slides. I want to make a, an outline on the proof, but let's see um, if I can say the other things about the generalized case. But let me let me just try to say it in, in simple words. Um, the idea is that uh, one forces this almost uh, maximal maximal independent family. Mm, and this family has this property, this property star. And the idea is to prove that this property star is proved, is preserved after a countable superiorization of sex force. So there are two cases. There is a successor case, case to prove that if you have, uh, suppose you have this maximal independent family and you force with sex once, then this family will stay maximal and not just maximal, the, the whole property will, will be, uh, will still valid on the extension. Mm. So yeah, and for the, for the limit case, um, there are some strong theorems that um, Schillag and Holstein developed when they prove uh, the consistency of R less than you um, and they developed a whole machinery of results of the sort um, contour support iteration of forcings with this and this and this and these properties is still up to property and this is one of the things that fits in this so it's like just magic um, for the for the um, for the limit cases right. So if one would like to ask, uh, to try to work on the question, the open question of the consistency of I less than A, um, yeah, one will have to develop a special independent family that has to be preserved by some kind of forcing, increasing A, so it should be, some kind of Matthias forcing. It depends, right? There are many forcing, depending if you want to do finite support iteration. Um, but yeah, it is, it is highly non-trivial how to do something like that. I, yeah. I know many experts that have no idea how to, how to attack this problem. Right, so I think, oh yeah, that was the main result. And then, yeah, so since I did the PhD, I've been interested in generalizations of cardinal characteristics to the context of uncountable cardinals. So suppose you have an uncountable cardinal and you want to look at the various spaces and, and suppose your cardinal is super nice. So regular and large cardinals, just, Think about a really nice cardinal and try to look where it's just boring, so meaning that you just copy paste all the results, or maybe there are interesting stuff. And for me, the independent number turned out to be quite surprising because, because it's really weird. Hmm? First of all, the definitions are quite easy to lift. Um, you start, we will start with a regular cardinal. Mm. And this is a, a more general definition. I will give it because this is due, oh, sorry, I did not write this, but this is due to Kenneth. Mm. So, Right, so we start with a family of sizes of chi, 
and that is of size at least kalpa. And we denote, this is the analogous of the set F, F, A that we did for omega. Um, now we are taking functions from A to two, uh, but the domain um, has size bounded by kappa. And this is the family of bounded functions of A, but I also say Boolean combinations. I'm very sorry because I know that the use of the term uh, I have yeah, misused terribly. I guess you already know this. Mm, right, so likewise, if you have one of these functions, you define the Boolean combination associated to it. When you just this big intersection, you take complements or take the sets themselves, you make all the intersect. And right, and we call this the family of generalized Boolean combinations associated to A. Um, and then we say that our family of subsets subsets of chi is independent, um, it's kappa independent if for every Boolean combination, they say they say Boolean combination, the corresponding set is unbounded on, on chi mm, and a maximal independent, kappa independent family is kappa maximal mm, if it's not properly contained in any of the and when we started to do this, we said, okay, just define the independent number this way. I guess uh, with Vera, we just take chi equals kappa. So um, we just take Boolean combinations of, of size less than kappa. Um, and let's define i and let's try to look where i satisfies the usual inequality. So if where it's i, I, I mentioned at the beginning that. Um, I has a, as a typical in omega has a, as a typical lower bounds both d and r. So the definitions of d of kappa and r of kappa are also like copy paste from omega. Um, so when asked where okay this number blah blah and then we were asking okay can we construct this independent family and blah blah, blah. and we were trying to do all the same. So to say, all the same. We wanted to construct an independent family that is that it may be indestructible. Let's see if indestructible when we do kappa sacks, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then at some point, someone asked us to actually kappa maximal kappa independent family to exist. And I was shocked and I said, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then I was, Wait, hmm? because in Omega, you use choice, right? Or Soren's lemma. You say, okay, if, if I have a, a chain of uh, maximal independent families, then the union is independent and blah, blah, blah. The end. But of course, you bump into a wall when you want to try to run this argument if you, your Boolean combinations are too wild, right? Mm, and then it was like, because yeah, we were already defining I and, and then, ooh, okay. <laughs> and then someone pointed us to results of Kunin, mm, who uh, defined independent this way. And, and he proved the following. Hmm. He proved that if you have a regular and kappa, regular kappa is like, I, I call it sometimes the degree of independence, because this is telling you, the chi is telling you where are you taking your sets from. So the family is, uh, but kappa is telling you where are your Boolean combinations. Okay. Um, so if kappa is regular mm, and uncountable and chi is any infinite cardinal, suppose so. Suppose you there is an, a, a maximal kappa independent family at chi. Then one has the following. 
uh, first of all, to draw less than kappa is equal to kappa. And second of all, there is a cardinal, uh, there is a, a, a gamma that, oh, sorry, um, in this interval, such that there is a non-trivial kappa, kappa plus saturated lambda complete ideal over kappa. And this is already, um, this already um, says that you need large cardinal. Hmm? If you take chi equals kappa and kappa is strongly inaccessible, um, the, the existence then of a kappa, kappa maximal independent family implies that to do less than kappa, to do less than kappa is kappa, and there is a kappa complete, kappa plus saturated ideal on kappa. And for example, notice that the ideal on the ideal in the theorem has to be lambda plus saturated. And this, this already um, goes to um, large cardinals. So this was like, oh, oh. Yeah, let's go back all the whole thing. Um, and the work with Vera that I'm going to mention um, goes towards a generalization of independence. I think there are still a lot of open questions in this context, but let's say we wanted to avoid this. Um, I can talk about this at the end maybe. Um, but then we, we decided to go with the vanilla version, which is, okay, you are going to take and you are going to take a countable cardinal. Um, you are going to take just finite Boolean combination. So we want just to get rid of, of all this mess of the existence of independence family. Um, but I, I, I really do think there is a lot of, um, there are a lot of interesting results. I mean, QNN proof, for example, that if you assume a measurable, uh, you can have, there is consistently a maximal independent family on that, on that measurable. Mm. So there are some consistency results and kind of nice things that one can do with this. Mm. But yeah, uh, at some point we said, okay, uh, we want to work with uh, with a nice version of independence. Um, so, so we are just going to take this, this notation here means Boolean combinations that are just finite. I mean, yeah, the domain of the function H is finite. Mm. And then one can still use choice undefined the cardinal I of kappa. Mm. And one has the, the usual um, inequalities. Moreover, one can construct also examples from kappa independent families, um, like in the, in the original case. And, and we have an analogous of the posit of the first part of the, the, the talk. Uh, we wanted to construct a posit um, that adds a maximal independent family, a couple maximal independent family in this new context, um, and is preserved by a uh, Sachs forcing. That, that was our motivation. And it turns out it was much, much more harder than we thought. And mostly it's because of the following. I, okay, I can talk about the forcing a bit, uh, but it's um, the same. We start uh, with a measurable cardinal and let you be a normal measure on kappa. So it's a similar pose as the one I defined it for the countable case. Conditions are pairs. First of all, you have a, in the first coordinate, you have an independent, a kappa independent family um, of cardinality kappa. 
And in the second coordinate, you have an asset now in U, um, such that likewise to the control case, all these intersections are big. Um, but big, I don't mean in the ultra filter, just, just unbounded. And the extension relation is the same. You are allowed to increase the family. You can always add more sets and you shrink the second part. And here, of course, this means A1 minus A0 is bounded on cup. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, let me just erase this. So likewise, um, one has the deposit um, is nicely closed and, and has the kappa plus plus chain condition. This condition, I'm sorry, the second I shouldn't have written this, that, that says nothing at this point. Yeah, sorry. It's a property that it has, but it gives you no information whatsoever, unless you, yeah. Uh, and the generic, fam the generic family that you are by um, taking the union of the first component on a, on a generic is maximally independent. One can also define the analogues of the density ideal. Mm. So analogously, so um, this is the ideal uh, of all elements here the, in the dual of the ultra filter. We start with the associated with the measure such that analogously for all Boolean combinations, you will please kind of find an extension that has empty intersection with the set, with the H H prime. And I mentioned that there were, mm, wait, that there were steps, uh, there was a nice Ramsey property of the filter um in the in the control case um, and there was this densely maximal property that we wanted to preserve mm -hmm. so the family that we force here with this poser at kappa will also be densely maximal in the in the in the sense that i mentioned maybe i can write it again in case um, Maximal. I think the definition is on a, in a slide afterwards, but just in case, uh, it means that for all subsets, so now we are in kappa, uh, and for all Boolean combination, mm, B, F, um, there is an extension such that either A of H prime um, in the X or A H prime minus X is part income. Mm. So this family is going to be as well densely maximal. Mm, but the thing is that the Ramsey property is something that it will be quite messy in this mm, in this context, and it it took us a long time to because this the, the new filter is not going to have the full Ramsiness so to say that we had before, um, but when you go to the uncountable. You, got, you gain that you have clubs. And if you have clubs, uh, we managed to fix this. And what you what we got was maybe let me just skip this. I said, oh, here is dense maximality. Sorry, that's what I just wrote. And the family that we had with this pose, it happens to be densely maximal. Um, 
And the main results are that if you start with a measure of a cardinal and a measure on it, uh, and you add this family first, and afterwards you force with, with Sachs forcing, you still have a dense, densely maximum independent family. And you can't even do a kappa support, oh, sorry, a kappa support product of Sachs forcing, and this is still going to be preserved. Mm, right, so, so yeah, this, these were the main results. I think I do not have more slides. So if it's fine with you, I mean, from time, I can show you a bit of the main proof, otherwise I think it would be, that would be all. I, I don't know, I mean, how, how long are the talks? Victoria said about one and a half hours. It's fine, yeah. but one bit. So that's, I can, that's fine, yeah, if, you, if okay. you want to indicate the proof, I think that would be nice. So I can, I won't do the one with the uncountable case, but I will point out in the in the one with the countable, where are the points where you, what you can have trouble. I hope it will be, because it, it's unfortunately quite technical. So, okay, let me stop here and then... So let me just I have some notes here so that I can right. So recall the um, we have added and this is the countable, but as I said, I will point out where are the points where things get messy. And I will just talk about the, the successor case because otherwise it's just uh, too technical. Mm. So recall we have some family um, that I call AG that is densely maximum. And I will rephrase it again in this weird way. Uh, that meant that for all H and for all X, a subset of AH, um, either there was, there was a B in the ideal associated by A, such that um, AH minus X was contained in B, or there was an extension of H prime, such that the whole Boolean combination A H prime was contained in could I just ask why do you so this is saying that there is this thing in this ideal this b such that mm -hmm. a h minus x is contained in it that's equivalent to saying that a h minus x is in the ideal right yeah right it just sounds so complicated to say it like that yeah yeah you're right right there okay yeah yeah you're right okay all right thank you um, yeah, I think I'm not going to... Yeah, thanks. Um, okay, so the family has this, pro this property and recall that the ideal has the, the Ramsey, the, the idea, the, sorry, the filter, the dual filter to the ideal A uh, has this Ramsey property, kind of Ramsey star, I will call it. Um, and it was what I called a p-set. And that is like this analogous property uh, to be a p-point. Right, so, and suppose you have a Sachs forcing. Mm. 
So I would like to prove that after I force with tax forcing, uh, the family, th this property will be preserved. This is the, the whole point. Um, right, so so I claim that V and V S and let's call this property star. Star holds. Hmm. Right, and then I should point out that there is a small lemma that says that if you look at the ideal associated to the mal to the this maximal independent family in the extension, it turns out is generated by the ideal on a, a, in the ground model. So I will um, I will just work with the idea in the ground model, okay? When I try to prove this property. And, okay. Good, so what is the point? So one suppose that this is not the case. So let H And X star be uh, is name for a pose for a subset of omega. Mm, such that uh, and a condition then star and P in S such that P forces that the property star let's say, depending on X and H, does not have. Okay. Mm, right. So what I want to do is the following. So suppose, let, T um, and a splitting uh, and yeah, in some splitting level of the three P. So um, for some M, and I want to define the following set. Oh, Y T is going to be the set of natural numbers such that there exists a condition is stronger than PT, such that Q forces, does not force, sorry, that M is not in X. And I have no idea where if you have, does anyone know if you have the blackboard, can you just go and then go back? Or if I erased, it's just erased. Does anyone know? <laughs> I don't you know, know how it is on I Zoom. Have, no, I okay, have no I have no idea. <laughs> I'm scared because I might need something. Um, right, so let me just write something. So this is a set um, that is going to be in the ground model. And I want to apply the property um, start to the sets yt. This is a really informal proof, so I'm just trying to give you an idea how it is. So I'm sure there will be details that uh, that they are missing, but the idea is I will define these sets and I want to apply that ag is densely maximal integral model with respect to these sets. So okay, let me see if I can. Okay, I can um, save it in pictures apparently. Oh yeah, there is a, a new sheet. Oh, this is great. Um, so, um, so the point is that, um, right, I want to apply the induction hypothesis for this. Okay, so first of all, 
this cell is going to be in AH. And maybe I did not say it, but I mean, X dot is forced to be in AH. And this will imply that this AYT will also be in a, a, uh, a subset of AH. And uh, right, I want to apply it. Uh, we want to use the distance maximum for yt and mm, and h. So what does that mean? That means that either AH minus YT belongs to the ideal, thanks Kante, or there exists an extension of H such that this set is contained in Oh, sorry, no. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, it's the other way around. There is a, an extension such that this Boolean combination is um, full contained in this, in this set. Right. So, if the later happens, I claim that P forces that AH prime intersects with X dot is empty. And this is because um, AH prime intersects with YT is. Um, Is, is empty as well. Hmm? And yt, what is yt doing? Maybe I should write yt again here. yt is the Z recon. yt is of the Z of m in omega, such that there is a q, let me say again, q recon. Sorry, Q less than PT. Just the Q for does not for PT. Sorry. Right. So the important case is what happens if AH minus YT is in, in the idea. And in this case, one has that. Mm. See again. This set then will be in the filter. And now what I want is to use the nice properties of the filter to find a pseudo intersection of the filter for all the whites. So let me add another. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. So if I add another page, I want where I I I want no I. Then there is. C in the filter such that the intersection with AH is contained of, it's almost contained of all the whites for all the. Right, so look for a second again at YT. YT was this is like the crucial set we have here. So there exists 
um, Q, PT, uh, such that Q does not force that M is not an X. And I did not say this, but this is a sax tree, so this is the tree up to the above the 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 node T. Mm. So take a point for a second. If you take a point there, you know that you can find a condition. Such that wait, did I did I write this properly? No, it's closed down. Did I? I want to say that for a setting Q in, in YT, um you can always find some condition that forces that in is in X time. Is this true? This is what I want. Mm. I, I think in the definition of yt, yeah. mm -hmm. says q doesn't for there exists an extension of pt that mm -hmm. doesn't force something, it's just saying that pt itself doesn't force that. Exactly, that's what I was going to say too. And if pt doesn't force that, then indeed then there is an extension. Right, I, I wrote it weirdly, sorry. I want just that there is an extension that forces this. Okay. Hmm. Wait, I, I I have to check. I'm very sorry. I don't want to say something that is is false. Yeah, I think this is uh, saying that there is an extension that forces that it's yeah. in is the same as yeah, saying yeah. that PT itself doesn't force that it's not in. Right, that's so. what I'm, 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 uh, I'm wondering why did I wrote YT this way. Yeah, sorry, mm -hmm. I should have written just that PT does not force this. I'm very sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So so if I have a point in yt such that yeah pi pt does not force that m is not in x then you can find an extension so this is really hard mm -hmm. Right, and if you look at the tree, then say that this is P, and suppose you, for example, you are in the in the um, in the stem of the tree, and so you look, for example, at uh, the stem. Let's see that the stem. P and you look at the two possible extensions, P0 and P1. And you look above these two trees for this condition Q. Um, so when once you go to stronger conditions, of course, the stem of the new condition can go up the tree quite high and I want for a second to think about conditions forcing that M is in next door of minimal height. I will always take the minimal, um, the condition of the, po po with the, posi the minimum possible height that has this property. And I want to define the following function. And notice what I want to do. I I started with this 
said that was supposed to be a counterexample counter for, um, for the property star. And I found YT and I applied that YT, um, that for YT the property, because it was in the ground model, I could apply the property. So what I want to, what I want to do, maybe it's good if we know towards we are going, what we are going. What I want to do is to have a set. I want to find a condition Q below P such that and A set um, C prime in the filter associated to a maximal independent family A, a such that the condition forces that this Boolean combination is contained in X dot. Because if I, if I find this, I have exactly the second property that I assumed it was not for by P. I have, I mean, if I, I talk about this set in the ideal, but if, if this is the case, then I will have the second part of the definition. Maybe I can just go back to the, um, then I will have that in the extension that is actually a set in the ideal. Such this happens for X dot. So the whole point of the argument is to find this, this set C prime in the filter. Mm -hmm. So the sets YT are looking okay. You look at um, your initial condition P and you look at the splitting nodes and these are these are tele, these YTs are giving you points such that you can force somehow these points within X dot, um, but I want a set in the filter that will be on it. So the point is that I want, okay, I have this way to cho choose po points um, to be forced within X, but I want to choose them wisely such that I also end up being in the, in the filter A. Um, Yeah, so so I will define the following function. What time is it? Oh, wow, sorry. I Let me just first define two functions and then I think maybe I can try to say the argument. So, so I will define h in omega such that h of n is the supreme or the of n plus one union. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take the height of some canonical conditions having this property. So Q, I will call it my QT, M. So the height is the length of the stem, or? Right, right, yes? right, right. Okay. That's what okay. I want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The okay. height is, is the height of the stem, yeah. Of this tree. Uh, such that these are uh, in the nth split in, uh, of P, and this I will do for all M less or equal than I. So what I do, what I want to do is um, I fixed an n, and I will look at all the m's below it, and of course it might be that m ends up to be in in I, in yt or it doesn't. Um, if it doesn't, if it's a point that is not in yt, define ih. I mean I don't care about these points. Um, 
But what I want is to uh, look at all these heights of these possible extensions. Because the condition Q is going to end up being constructed as a fusion sequence. So I want to force one point at the time within X. But recall that I want this set to be in the filter. So, mm, and the, for the, the second function f is the function that is going to bound the difference between these two sets. So one knows that C um, intersection with AH is almost containing the YTs. So let's call it the difference. So let f um, to be such that the intersection is contained of in F of A. Mm -hmm. Right, so I want these two functions and let me just finish by, finish by saying that the point of, of the Ramsey-ness property of, um, of the ideal of the ideal A, um, of the ideal associated to the family A, is that I want to choose a set in the filter such that Let's suppose I look, this F is just measuring these differences. Um, and I can even construct it such that F is, uh, uh, dominates H. Mm. And the idea is that my set, let me just see, find an idea. Mm. I said C prime in the filter associated to the idea such that, and let's enumerate it. Let's put this key in for an omega. And what I want is that F of Kn is always below Kn plus one. So I want a function. I want a set in the filter such that the function that I just constructed doesn't jump that much. So I want always that if I have a point and I do all this function, the next point, the, the, the next point in my set is going um, to be always above this function. And the thing is that if one can ensure, and this, this construction on the function relies on this Ramsey property in the countable case. And this was the point where we, um, for the generalization of the uncountable case, uh, we use clubs instead of this kind of Ramsey-ness because one has kind of can, sort of a partition property, but it's much more complicated and it, it, it's, it's definitely not true um, on, the, on the uncountable case, but somehow clubs became um, handy to guarantee that you can find this special set. Um, and of course, the, of course, it comes the fusion argument um, where you have to find a condition that forces exactly these points k and uh, to be elements of x dot. Hmm. Mm, yeah. Uh, um, it, it, it gets more technical than that, but yeah, I just want to give you an idea where, okay, the where the properties are used, um, where the p point or the p set property is used, and where the Ramsey-ness property is used. And the Ramsey-ness property is here. This and in the control, this was uh, fixed um, or not fixed. Like we get around with it with by using this. Um, club argument um, and in the in the control this is the, the Ramsey property. So yeah, I, I hope you have gotten an idea. I'm sorry if I um, yeah.
I think that's all. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, great. Uh, are there are there any any questions? I actually do have a question. <laughs> so so <laughs> I was just. Uh, so I never thought about these independent families, but uh, from from the definition, it seems to be very natural to think about it uh, somehow model theoretically. Like if I if I would consider mm -hmm. uh, a model whose universe are the natural numbers and it's equipped with uh, unary predicates for all these elements of an independent set, then I could okay. look at then I could look at what is definable in this model using a quantifier free. Uh, formula with mm -hmm. one free variable, and essentially these would just be the Boolean combinations, uh, right? So, so basically, it would mean mm -hmm. that by a formula of that form, I can only define infinite sets, right? That would kind of be a, a way to think about this uh, notion see. of mm -hmm. independence. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. which I think is very natural, but uh, but then it would suggest that m one might look at. Uh, uh, other formulas, like, or for example, like I was just brainstorming, like if you, um, if you considered um, collections of, I mean, if you made the predicates two airy and looked at what you can define in the model, in such a model, um, so you would, have, would be able to talk about projections and all that stuff. Has anybody looked at that? I mean, this would be a I different different notion of independence, maybe. Um, I never have seen this. Hmm. Even a stronger versions of independence, it's, how I haven't seen it. Like, yeah, some, someone's asked me, because for example, you can have divine the stronger versions of almost disjointness. If you ask, for example, okay, and almost disjoint means you want different things. You want, for example, that the intersections are small, right? instead of what we, so when we say, what we could say, okay, what if we want the intersection to be in an ideal and, um, but I don't see, for the, for the independence case is always, it always gets hard and weird and the more theoretic approach I have never heard of, to be honest, okay. never. No. No. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question just about the the, den the density maximal property, mm -hmm. particularly in the countable case, but kind of in both. I mean, is it obvious that there are maximal families that are not densely maximal? This I mean, is a is good it, question. This is open. I have no idea. No. Yeah. No. Is, is it? I mean, is it clear that there's always a densely maximal family? I mean, you, like. What do you mean? I mean, consistently at least. But right, consistently you get it from this forcing, but I mean, is it is it conceivable that there are no, like in a model, there are no density maximal families or something like that? Yeah, I, I or this, that, this or we thought one. about at some point, but yeah, I, I don't see how to force okay. this, yeah, or to, yeah, to try to prove in, I, at, I guess at some point we tried to prove in CFC where you can just get, yeah. And someone suggested you can't even define a cardinal again. Then you see, but yeah, <laughs> I, I I don't know. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Any more? Any more questions? Anybody? Okay. It's also getting late in Vienna. I think, right? We should let you go. Yeah, it's quite <laughs> late this time. <laughs> okay, it's all right. Thanks a lot again. Then. It was a great talk. So, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, have a nice day. Okay, have a good night. Bye -bye. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Diana.